What's going on boys and girls, what's up world? Austin John plays here and today I'm going to be going over 30 brand new facts for you to know about Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I'm not going to be including any spoilers and most things you'll experience in the first 5 hours of gameplay. So without further ado, let's begin. First of all, anytime that you complete a trial at a shrine, you're going to get an orb. That spirit orb is not useless. Four spirit orbs, once collected, you can bring them to a goddess statue and exchange it for an upgrade for your health or stamina. If you upgrade it for your health, that is one full heart. If you upgrade it for your stamina, that is about a quarter of a wheel. All weapons break. Most of the weapons at the start of the game are going to break within uh, a couple hours, one hour, or not long at all with frequent use. As of we've seen right now, there is no armor in the game that's going to break. However, we don't know if fire is going to affect things like a wooden shield. For the Switch, if you bring it into mobile mode, it's going to slightly bring down the depth of the graphics, but you're going to get a slightly better frame rate. The areas for docked mode when there's a lot going on, you're not going to see the best quality sometimes, and turning down your resolution on your TV is not going to help improve the frame rate. Overall, this doesn't happen very often. If you can enter a shrine, you'll most likely have everything you need to complete the shrine. In a shrine, there's a second chest with a rare item. This requires an additional puzzle or aspect of the puzzle to get that item. There are cuckoos, cuckoos, the, the, the chickens. There are chickens in this game, and you can still use them to glide. You can mount other animals in the game other than horses, like you can mount a deer, but you most likely won't be able to bring him and register him at an outpost. Also, there's some dangerous wildlife in this game, such as bears and snow leopards, so just be careful when you start to explore far away from the Great Plateau. You will die. You'll die often. Every single demo I've seen, I've seen every single player die. You'll often explore areas that you should probably be stronger before going over to them. So there's no harm in turning down a battle. This game isn't going to hold your hand like previous Zelda titles like Skyward Sword or Majora's Mask. But when you die, there's no real penalty. It's not like you're going to lose this amount of rupees or anything else. The game is going to bring you back to an autosave with your inventory at that point. Drowning will actually bring you back to the edge of the water, so the penalty for this is much less. When riding your horse, it's going to avoid trees and kind of stick to a general path and pretty much guide you along the way. This is great so you can focus on attacking enemies with your bow. The plateau is a relatively small area that's going to give you a good idea on most of the game's mechanics, so you could kind of think of it as the tutorial area. You're going to be spending your first one to six hours here. You won't have three separate save files like a regular Zelda game. There are five autosaves and a manual save. Now you can set up different profiles for the game with different points of progression, so it's going to function more like a traditional open world game like Skyrim or Fallout as opposed to a traditional Zelda game. You can hold a lot of food and materials in this game, but only a limited amount of clothing and weapons. You're going to come across Korkiri with the Korkiri puzzles and they're going to reward you Deku seeds. You can then exchange these Deku seeds in for increases for your inventory, for your weapons, or armor. Holding right on the D-pad is going to bring up a weapon selection screen, but there's no hot swapping of weapons. This is still great though, so you don't need to hit start and then go to your inventory every time you want to change your weapon. There are wild fairies. You need to sneak up on them, but you don't need a bottle. It just goes into your inventory, and if you die during battle, it'll revive you. The currency in Breath of the Wild is still rupees, but finding them in the wild is much more rare, so you're going to be getting most of your rupees from things that you sell. Weather change happens quite a bit in the game. Rain is frequent, and if you start to see Link spark when it's raining, you want to change your clothing immediately to something non-metallic, because you will get struck by lightning and you will die. Also, it becomes much more difficult to climb walls when it's raining. If you walk up from the southern tip of the world to the northern tip of the world, it's going to take about a half hour of consecutive walking and climbing, not including running or gliding. So it's a big world. The shrines that you come across in the game, you could do them in any order that you'd like. You're going to get your first horse within about two to three hours of the game. Granted, if you know exactly where one is and you want to run right at it, maybe a little bit less. The aquatic traveling merchant Beetle appears in this game, except he's going to be seen wandering in the wild. He's going to sell you materials to cook with and possibly craft with. There are also many other merchants in the game, and some are involved with a side quest. Side quests in the game can range from quick things, hunting an enemy, or more complicated tasks. Almost all of the voice acting in this game is going to be during the cutscenes. 
NPCs in the game will react to you. So if you try to slash at them, or if enemies appear, or you put down a bomb, they're going to react. I don't think you can kill them though, so that's good. You're going to get the ice, fire, and electric arrows from chests in the overworld. It's not certain right now if there's other ways to get them, but we know for a fact you will find them in the wild. If you kill enemies in the game, they're going to stay dead for a certain amount of time. So it's not like you walk away, you come back, and they're all back and revived, so killing them actually means something. The day-night cycle for the game is 1 minute to 1 hour, so in 24 minutes of gameplay, you're going to experience one full day. And lastly, there's a blood moon. Once in a while in the sky, the moon's going to be red, and the entire sky is going to turn a dark, violent red. When the moon hits the highest point in the sky, all of the enemies in the world are going to be revived. That's some pretty scary shit right there. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. 30 brand new facts about Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments down below. I try to read all of them. Also, if you don't know, I am going to be giving away a Nintendo Switch. To be eligible, be sure to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and here's a little hint. I really, really like the people who are super involved with the channel that like all the videos, comment and subscribe. You guys are the best part of my YouTube community, and I don't know, maybe there's a better chance that you get picked. Actually, yes, there is a 100% better chance that you will get picked if you are one of those people. Till next time, Austin John out.